When we solve an initial value problem using the Laplace transform, we end up with the function y of s, the Laplace transform of the function y of t we are looking for. So how do we find our original function back? For this we need the inverse Laplace transform. We do have a general formula for the inverse transform. This requires, however, a lot of knowledge about complex functions. You can learn all about it in the web lectures elsewhere on my channel. For our purpose, though, we prefer a different approach. We have already found a few pair of functions and their Laplace transform, and we can put them all in a table. The idea is now to try to rewrite our new y of s in terms of functions that are in this table and then use a table to find the original y of t. Of course we cannot transform back all functions y of s this way, but in many cases this method with the table works just fine, and in this video we will encounter a first example. So, for general formula, go to complex analysis. Now we will use a shortcut with a table with f of t, f of f's pairs, and we will rewrite our uh, y of s in terms of functions in this table. So start with a short version of the table. We have our f of t in this column, our f of s in that column, and, and we have done t to the power n. And Laplace transform turns out to be n factorial divided by s to the power n plus 1. We have done e to the power a t. Laplace transform turns out to be 1 over s minus a. And we have done the sine and the cosine, and you can easily include the e to the power a t to get those Laplace transforms over here. And if we go further, uh, we will make the table slightly longer, but not much longer. So let's take a look again at our uh, initial value problem, y double minus y prime minus 2y equals 0 with these initial conditions. And in the previous video we found y of s over here. And now we want to transform back. However, this y of s is not directly in our table. However, we can rewrite it a bit. We can uh, factorize the denominator, s squared minus s minus 2 equals s plus 1 times s minus 2. And then we can split our y of s into two parts in an a over s plus 1 plus a b over s minus 2. So we do a partial fractions decomposition of y over s. The idea is of course that the two, uh, fraction, the, the, the two terms we are left with are indeed in our table. So how do we do this decomposition? Uh, we multiply the first term by 1, by s minus 2 over s minus 2, and we multiply the second term by 1, s plus 1 over s plus 1, and then we know that this quotient has to be equal to s minus 1 over s squared minus s minus 2. The denominators are the same, so the numerators also have to be the same, and that means if we compare numerators we have a, a plus b times s, so that has to be equal to 1, and then we have a minus 2a plus b, so that has to be equal to minus 1. So we have two equations here with two unknowns, and solving for a and b, we find a equals 2 over 3 and b equals 1 over 3. So this yields our y of s. We can plug them in over here. So y of s equals 2 over 3 times 1 over s plus 1 plus 1 over 3 times 1 over s minus 2. But 1 over s plus 1 and 1 over s minus 2, those are in our table. They are over here. The first one is a equals minus 1. So gives us an e to the power minus t, and the second one is a equals 2, so it gives us an e to the power 2t. So there we have our y of t, which is the solution of our initial value problem.